What is drift? Drift is any movement without direction, away from a designated course. It can apply to an individual, a family, a church, an institution, and even a nation. It's a gradual divergence from a clearly defined objective. It doesn't happen suddenly. It's gradual. It only takes a friend who cares. My sister, Mrs. Suma, Mumbi, to come and tell you, my, my sister, you've drifted. You are not the person we knew. You were so prayerful. When things hit you, you could always say, let us pray. Today, you are running, looking at the numbers on those boards in town, saying, Muganga, Wanatibu, Siris, Yuigani, Nagani. And you are busy trying those numbers. The Lord is no longer your solution. It's allowing life to be mastered by the currents of the time, where your life is carried along by the by the prevailing circumstances and philosophies. The Lord is not your reference anymore. The word of God is not your reference anymore. If anything, you've detached. We have detached from the word. We are busy on social media. And some of the things which are posted there, they just make our hearts and minds to start debating you know, with the word of God. Trying to match the wisdom of men with the word of God. It cannot happen. It cannot work. And now, over time, we drift. We change course. And we start arguing like people who are up to something else. Not, you know, going to heaven. Drift occurs without notice. And works steadily. By allowing misgivings, compromises, and certain attitudes are allowed to continue without correction. It works without notice. You may not notice. In fact, my brother, my sister, you say wananionea. I don't know the Kiswahili interpretation for that. No, the English. They are singing for me. Wananionea. Eh? <laughs> yes? Yes. No, because I'm okay. Yes, you feel you are okay. But somebody else can see what is happening. In the first service, I gave them an illustration of some of the games we do when we are doing team building. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a live experience where we blindfold, you know, a team. And we tell them they are, each one of them is on their lane. They are blindfolded. And we tell them, on your marks, get set. And that's why you see things. A brother started like very well. The finish point is there. You know, that folded part of that curtain. That's the place. But because you are blindfolded, they are busy running. And all of a sudden, they have changed direction. But it's even more, un more unfortunate for them that within a short time they turn the opposite direction. And because you, you are seeing, you are not blindfolded, you are feeling so bad. Brother! You know, you are not allowed to tell them how they should go, yeah? but you feel so bad. This is Deacon Arena. Deacon, no, no, where are you going? That's the finish point, but Deacon is going towards the gate. Like, Deacon, come. Ah, what is wrong? We thought, Deacon, Deacon, you are the one who has been teaching us. You've been there in charge of CD in Sitam, Eldoret. What is happening? You are even not dividing the word of God. You know, what's happening with Deacon? It's exactly like that. You are so confident, moving in the op opposite direction. You drifted by 10 degrees, another one by 50 degrees. And I'm here to tell us that we should not have self-confidence. Allow somebody else to tell you, you are going miles away from the road. That's drifting. 
It works like a terminal disease. By the time it's discovered, it's too far gone to correct. Disaster therefore begins with very small movements away from the center. There was a story of this abominable porcupine. The men in this church understand this one very well. You know, in that community, somewhere, where it was an abomination to eat a porcupine. But there is this friend in that community who the held us one of the days, they find him very busy. You know, hunting for some, some animal. And which animal was that? The porcupine. And they got hold of him. Brother! Kuja! And they went to the Igwe of the place. Igwe! You know our rules. You know our laws of the land. We found him hunting for a porcupine. And Igwe tells them, ah, okay. Uh, I've checked my our chronicles well and our records, I don't think, I'm, uh, what is he saying? Where is it written that it's wrong to hunt for a porcupine? And for sure, he's let to go. Okay, he goes away with it. After three weeks, the guy has caught the porcupine and he's taking it home. And the elders catch up with him. Hey, friend, let's go. Igwe, we got him now. This time he's not getting away with it. Actually, he has caught it. In fact, he has killed it. And they go again and they go, um, the guy says, but where is it written that a man, you know, cannot keep a porcupine in the house? What is the issue? My sister Joy. You can imagine, he is allowed to go away with it. Of course, eating the porcupine is the issue. All right. And now this time, they find the porcupine boiling in the pot. And anaongeza uh, chumvi, eh? Kwa porcupine. And they carry him this time with the sufuria. And the cooking porcupine. Igwe, we got him now. He was cooking. In fact, he was adding some roiko and a few things on the porcupine. And he well listens to the case and it's like, ah. And he says, where is it written you cannot cook the porcupine? Of course. And he goes away with it. Yeah. Do I need to finish the story now? I don't need to. Eh? You can finish it for yourself. What happened the following day? He was inside bus because he had eaten the porcupine. But this time he couldn't run away with it. That's how it goes. That's how drifting works. You start with where is it written? When you reach at that point, it's a wrong step, the wrong direction. Is it written? Ni wapi meandikwa? Pride you used to be a humble person when probably one or two, you had not achieved one or two things. But pride has caught up with us. Addictions. The first service I mentioned, like, you just went one day in the bar there and your work was just to accompany Angor, who stays in the US and is around. You don't want him to, to, live, to, to feel lonely. And you just took a soda. That's fine. It's understandable. The next day, have a glass so that Uncle doesn't look like you are so down on and behind. The next day, and we were saying probably after one month, it's Uncle who is helping you to get home. Drunk. That's how it starts. Issues that allow for deviation. <coughs> Hebrews 6, 1 to 8. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works 
and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of ends, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment, and this will do if God permits. For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it's cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it's rejected and near to be, being cast, whose end is to be burned. Paul is describing an apostate, but he's also describing the nature of the person who has turned away from the accurate pathways and a person who is not making progress. This is a person who has been on the right path. Mark this. I'm not talking about those who are not born again. This person has been on the right path. This person has tested the good word. He has preached the word. Testified of the goodness of the Lord. Taken membership in a church, a good church, like Satan Eldoret. Prayed for the sick in the hospital at MTRH. And they have gotten well. They have gotten ill. Held some leadership position at one time. Become an elder like Wambua at another time. Become a pastor at another time. Become a leader of a nation like Kenya at another time. I'm talking about that person. Exercised the power of the Holy Spirit. Spoken in other tongues. Chased demons. <clears throat> and did many things in his presence. Our theme. Enlightened, that word enlightened in Greek is for tizo. It means to be aimed with knowledge, to see, to comprehend, and to understand, to be illuminated and brought into the light. That is the kind of person I'm talking about. We have no doubt that you don't know the Lord, Brother Suma. We have no doubt. The Israelites knew God. That's, that's the meaning for Tizor. Who among his stars would know God more than the Israelites? These brethren are on a journey, an escape journey from Egypt. And they reach the, an edge like where I'm standing. It's water, fastness of water, the Red Sea. And behind them, the enemy pursues and the Lord tells them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What a command. And you know what happens? Shh. There's an highway in the sea. And they march. And behind them, they see the drowning of that enemy. The Lord had told them, you see him now, you will see him no more. It is fulfilled in their sight. Who knew, the, who knew God more than them? Back in Egypt, saw the plagues. I don't think you've seen frogs. When frogs are all over, everywhere, in the bedroom, taking over, you know, the kitchen. Frogs taking over every available space. They saw it. Who knew the Israelites? I mean God more than the Israelites. But the same guys on the other side, they are telling Moses what? Hey, we would rather, really, rather be there taking malenge in a hitwanini. 
what? They are pumpkins. My sister, thank you. Yes, pumpkins. Hey, when Moses goes to speak to God on the mountain, they are the same guys who are making, you know, they are dancing. So long as Moses, the prefect, is not around, they deviate. They drift away. That is for Tizo. We know and I know you know God. He's done it for you. When you called upon him, when your children did not have school fees, he came through for you. But what, up, what has happened? We have forgotten him. Tested of the heavenly gift. The Greek word is geo. The word is used to describe Christ testing death. For all men. Tested here is not just sampling, but being fully immersed in it. Every gift refers, or refers to a resource from the next realm. So we have no problem. We've tested. Not like I would put some feet on water or a stick to test the depth. But we are fully immersed. In fact, when you got born again, you spoke in other tongues. Meaning you started experiencing our destination, the realm, heavenly gift where we are going. But it is still possible to be complacent. Still possible to drift. Still possible to backslide. And still appear in the congregation. And still appear in the SG. And still appear and even preach. Still possible. Partakers of the Holy Spirit. The word partakers does not describe a distance, distance interaction, but partnership. It means to share sense in the office. Share in the office. Dignity and work of the Holy Spirit. Tested the good word of God. The rhema. A revelational life-giving word. Tested the powers of the world to come. Yes. It describes an individual who has interacted with and experienced the next. The next level. Or the next realm. Full interaction. With the high voltage from the next realm. When I talk about high voltage, some of us seated here are great servants of God. You've even touched the eyes of the blind and definitely they saw. You can give testimonies. I know. Senior pastor, if you sample testimonies from these servants of God, you'll wonder why they are seated down there. Some of them. The things God has done through you. Mighty things. Mighty things. It's true. But still, we can drift having done such things. Paul, Paul is saying, I'm so careful that I don't preach and I become the one who misses heaven. My converts go to heaven. I become the one who remains. When we talk about high voltage, why is it still that we are wavering between two opinions? You are still debating with the truth of the word of God. Things we understand by this. Drifting is not a condition that's confined to the immature. You can be fully mature and still drift. Actually, those who are mature easily drift. Let me make that submission. Some of the cults and all cults we hear and talk about, behind them are people who have read the whole Bible. People who have become men of dawah. Men of dawah is a novice in, in, in Islam. People who have studied other denominations. That's what we would call apologetics on our side here. You know, they can read, they can... They have been there. So, some of those people reach a point where they stall down. They park on the road. They become self-centered. And they start castigating the same word. They start, you know, castigating the work of God. They start being against, you know, the work of God. So, anybody, drifting is not... For the newly saved. 
is for all of us. You don't know when the clock. Kitambo kidogo, Elder Philip. Kulikuwa na ile saa inaitwa ya majira. Na kuna instructions. Ha? Huh? Ogola. Yo yo usipoweka majira. Mara 1 2 na hesabu 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 every day. If you forget to do that. When it is Monday at 10, it will be telling you it is still Sunday at 4. Am I right? Yes. That's where we are. Is it still a clock? Yes. Is it still moving? Yes. Is the brother still attending SG? Yes. But is he reading the right time according to the purposes of God? No. Is he still a leader? Yes. Do I use a he or a she? Is he still a pastor? Oh. Okay, let me balance. Is he or he or she or she a pastor? <laughs> yes. But is he showing the right time? No. Drifted. To us. Like that person I was telling you about. You look okay. You are moving. But you are not on course. We cannot drift. The Lord is calling on us this day to look at ourselves and get back. Drifting has no respect for insight. <coughs> and by the way, because I'm slowing down, I also drifted. Actually, I almost backslid. When I got born again, sometimes in 1987, I was in school. And uh, the CU leadership, I don't know what they saw in me. Very fast, they give, gave me a seat. Became the secretary. Hey, the CU, I just got born again the other day and I have an office. Ah, I think that was a bit fast or something. Then within no time, we are told, kuna kitu inaito a cross Cross country. Now your cross country, the route used to, to pass by just near my home. <laughs> let, me, let me take the story first. And my father is a farmer. And we have mango trees. I'm coming home. Eh? <clears throat> cross country, just connect the story. Cross country, the route passes through our home. <laughs> Mangoes. My, farmer, my father is a farmer. So you can imagine, and I'm, I got born again. So we would pass by there. And I call, call the boys. Kujeni. I know my dad is not around. Especially the ones which are next to the road. We get there. And then the next day my father would come to school. I want to see my son Wambua. I know things are not good. Where are the mangoes? <laughs> and I'm born again. And I realize things are not working for me. And so when I see the, the, our, our CEO chairman, I would take a different route. When the meetings are supposed to happen at 6, the prayer meeting, devotion, I get to remember it was, there was a meeting at 9. Ah, so it took God because of small things. There is also a friend who was trying to teach me how to smoke, you know. And I was like, did I make a mistake, you know, receiving Christ? These things also look good. Sometimes, you know, where you are coming from, immediately you depart from that place. I don't know why it looks like it's better. Not knowing where you are is the place. And so what changed me, thankfully, I didn't say this, Ref, in the first service. At the end of that term, when we were closing school, the principal said, let that young boy, he's called Wambua, let him be the speaker. And you know that evening, you know over 800 students, the teachers are sitting here, and I'm given an opportunity, 20 minutes to preach in the evening. And uh, do you know the topic I chose? Where will you be one minute after you close your eyes in death? Where will you be? And that night, and remember, I've not been attending CU meetings. So the chairman is also wondering, what will this uh, backslidden brother <laughs> talk about? And God, God used me. I saw, you know, my teachers, my chemistry teacher. In, oh, may his soul rest in peace. You know, 
coming and once that I was too small to pray for them. And that day I said, no, I cannot play either sick anymore. I cannot. And I came out, I confessed myself, and I said, no more complacency, no more drifting. I'm going all the way. Praise be to God. That's why I'm preaching this morning. Amen. Because I went all the way. <clears throat> the most experienced sailor can find himself drifting if he does not pay attention to his journey. Once the human spirit possesses the capacity to compromise, then it's a target. Compromise, complacency can be in the area of pride, integrity. There are things you really hated. You hated sin. Those funny deals. When you hear somebody is in such deals, you used to, to cast them and pray that the Lord can open their eyes. Today, you are in the same deals. Spiritual disciplines. You used to pray. You used to read, to love, be in love with the word of God. But today you are soaked in Facebook. Posting, reposting, forwarding, reforwarding. Until you cannot quote a scripture. I was telling the first church this morning that in college, back in college, when you were crossing the corridors, it was like a must for you to give a testimony. And we always used to tell, you know, what is this one thing the Lord has spoken to you today? And definitely you had to have that one thing. So if you didn't have devotion in the morning, you definitely go back. Because a brother will stop you and tell you, what is the Lord saying? And you cannot keep quiet. You just have to say what the Lord is saying. Yes. Today, when did you receive that one thing from the Lord? Last year, some of us during COVID, the Lord is telling us to move. Hebrews 2, 1 to 4 says, we are now living on a Christ platform. For this reason, we must pay closer attention to what we have had so that we do not drift away from it. Drift is the word parallel. Means to slip from the ones from one minds. We are supposed to tie the law of the Lord in our hearts. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty, how? How? Friends, how? How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? When Nathan confronted David, he said, you allowed the word of God to slip from your mind. Our conscience should be alive in the spirit. When we drift away, our conscience is not alive in the spirit. I was saying, you can go ahead na unapata, unakwasa uyu ndugu, unakwasa uyu dada, unakwasa, you know, just stumbling everybody. And there is nothing which speaks to you and tells you, brother, hey, slow down. Unaribu ushirika. Umekwaza SG muzima. Nothing. Nothing. A dead conscience. Complacency. But are you moving? Yes. Do you look like you are on the journey? Yes. Are you on the journey? No. Let's question ourselves. Things extract our present position demands higher degree of diligence because we have shifted and upgraded. We need to be more conscious about the drift, friends. Like the expressway in Nairobi. The other day I passed there and I realized you have to be on speed, man. That, that highway, you just don't go for, you know, 60 kilometers. 120, 130, and you feel good. But you must be conscious of the drift. You can easily, you know, hit on those walls very fast. You know, we are in such an highway. We need to be conscious. I'm not talking 
I'm talking to both young and mature friends. Paying close attention to land principles is a key safeguard against drifting. Give more honest heed. The Greek word for that is possession. It means to bring near. Remove the distance between knowing and doing. Turning the mind to. To attach oneself. To cleave to. To be conscious and to apply. Remove that distance between knowing and doing. We call it reflexive obedience. Whereby there is no distance between what the Lord has told you and the time you take to respond. It becomes a zero gap. This word involves comprehension and application. Be more conscious and apply. Drift is caused by the leakage of learned principles. Leakage is something we sometimes never recognize it's happening. You don't. It's unconscious. It just happens. And people start telling you, sister, what is wrong? And you turn to them and ask them, what is wrong? Something is wrong. What is wrong? Because you can't see. It takes a friend, a pastor probably, a man of God, a concerned friend to come and tell you you stopped praying. There is something we are seeing. You have been mentioned in this story. You were in the news yesterday. We saw your face on KTN. Weren't you the one? They were talking about a lot of money. They are talking about embezzlement of funds. They are talking about this and that. Are you the one? And you are like, what is wrong? I'm still in the journey. That's not true. The Lord is telling the Israelites, you've come enough. The Lord is simply telling us this morning, you are my own. I love you. You are my sons. Just journey on. Don't drift. It's a result of spiritual negligence. Paul connects drifting with negligence. Carelessness, disregard and indifference to the things of the spirit. Look at Eli. Spiritual monotony. There's nothing fresh. I am a member of Sitam. I have the card. In fact, you Google. You'll see my name there. I serve. Senior, thank you. I serve in the, 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 the fellowship of elders. So, complacency, nilifika, the things you used to love. Probably the only word you survive with is the word on Sunday. First service or second service. After that, you wait for the next one. The Lord is telling us, wake up. Wake up. Let's wake up. There is no sight for Eli. He has become blind, but he has no idea. He has become spiritually insensitive. Samuel has to come to him three times, and before he recognizes that God is speaking, actually he needed revival. We need revival, church. There is a loss of government authority. He no longer has the authority to unjust behavior. The sons are messing. He cannot tell them, stop. You used to be an authority to your daughters, to the youth in this church. But today the things they are complacent about are the same things we are struggling with as parents. We have lost the moral authority to call them home, to tell them, no, masturbation is wrong, sin. This is sin. He lost the moral authority. He lost the thermostat element and became the thermometer. The thermostat is the spiritual element which regulates us. Whenever you are walking and you are about to step on the wrong path, you know the spirit tells you, no, don't engage yourself in that deal. Don't sign that check. Don't sell that commodity at that amount. Don't say those words. Don't act that brother. Give a gorogoro of mains to that family. You know, you no longer hear that voice. And that's why we find ourselves drifting. We become the thermometer. We ndugu. Napima. Ako chini sana. Iyo praise and worship. Ah. Hey, leo awaku bam. Awaku letter. You know, a thermometer seated there. Checking around. Checking around. 
you need we need the thermostat the spiritual thermostat there's a frisee mentality deep inside of Eli Samuel hears from God Eli threatened Samuel to tell him and did nothing tell me what God is saying preach to us but he did nothing there is a desire to know but very casual in a plane there will be strenuous attempts to deception and heresy. Deception is not blindness. It does not step sight. It warps sight. Deception is believing that your perception is accurate when absolutely it's not. We are in a season of intelligence, clashing opinions, scoffing at what the truth of God is about. They ask you, where is it written? Ni wapi imeandikwa? Or where is it written? You know, I don't know. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the servants, cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and precious devotion to Christ. The pattern is empty wisdom. And trickily, that seems reasonable. Simplicity. We are saying stay right down the track. Friends, don't excessively interpret the scriptures or allow people to interpret the scriptures in a wrong way or you lose the meaning and be deceived. Don't play around with what was said directly by God. Read the scriptures. Don't be corrupted. That means to spoil the leading away. Note the process by which the enemy shifted Eve's perception of state. He meant her to consider, to judge, and to debate within. Some process occurs today as we are sorted by the new levels of Moral decay and lawlessness. War of different kinds of sight. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. They'll say, where is this coming? As he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it is. You know, at the beginning of creation, the basis of scoffing. That's emphatic argument that denies the progression of events towards ultimate conclusion. Breakage of community and corporate trust. Deception of doctrine. Inaccurate hearing and processing of the word of the Lord and of the Lord's positions and attitudes to things. You know, breach of principles that govern life like work to one. Enticed by false freedoms of mind. Art body. You know, betting. Lottery. You don't work. Somebody tells you, just come. Bring a glass of water. I'll pray for it. Take that water in seven days. You know, you know, trickery. Something just to cause you to debate. We should take the word of God. What God has said, we should cling to that and stick to that. Yesterday I saw in the news, <coughs> those who watched, a church, Men in cloth saying they have no issue with polygamy. After all, we are with those many ladies who don't have husbands. Where, where, where will they, do you want them to go? And then a leader, an astute leader in this nation, stands and says, yes, I support them. I'm a Christian, and I think they have a point. There is critical need to get to the end, to endure, to stay under, to exercise restraint. The enemy wants to eat our future. There is critical need to hold the line at such a time as this, to deeply consider. Noah was acting and strategically operating in opposition to the general trends of his day. They ate and drank while Noah built. You can read that, that next part. Friends, we need capacity to pre represent the Lord in the darkness. The darkness has increased. There are many false preachers. But what is the relevance of light? I mean, what is the relevance of light? Darkness. Let's rise up and defend our faith. Defend the truth to the glory of God. Give me... Um, Number 37, please. Friends, we must be more angled towards our destination than where we are. 
Our lifestyles must change towards where we are going than where we are coming from. We are sojourners. This place is not our home. The Lord is saying, stop, stop camping and move on. Our only example should be Christ. There's a lot of noise on earth. The Lord is saying, let's be like the salmon fish. The only fish we can, which can swim against the current. The salmon, they live all their life in the sea. But when it comes, when they grow old and it is time to... to um, to, 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 uh, okay, let me use the word to reproduce. They get back to where they were born. It can be 1,400 kilometers. But they use some magnetic, the earth's magnetic field and some sense of smell to get there. They can, you know, they can go up a waterfall, getting to where their genes are, the salmon fish. And when they get there, they reproduce and then they die. They become food to the next generation. Where are we leaned to? Where is our inclination? Is it where our genes are? Where in heaven, where the Lord is waiting for us. Friends, let's not be deceived. Let's run the race with perseverance. The race that has been, you know, put before us. Drifting requires no effort. It makes more effort to stay on course. Drifting is an unconscious process. It's possible, friend, to drift unaware. You never drift upstream against the tide. Christian living is like, you know, it's not living like a jellyfish, but rather like a salmon. The speed the downstream always increases and becomes more difficult and more strenuous to turn the process around to move upstream. I was telling the first service that when we were young, we didn't have these things at Rupa Malls. Eh? If you, do, you just climb there and you, sh you slide down. No, we just needed to identify an up place. There is water and you know there is good clay soil. You just go there and put yourself there and you find yourself, you know, sliding nicely. Elder Mze Magomere knows these things. And I see it are legends. <laughs> it's only the legends who can understand. And you find, and you are actually accelerating down. Now, that's how drifting takes place. It's very easy. There's no effort. Just release yourself and give yourself a position of backsliding. And you will find yourself down there. Actually hitting back on the brethren. It's not easy. It's not easy. Friends, as we wind up, choir, please come over. Drifting always ends in disaster. Disaster is never a personal issue, but brings danger to others. You can see with the many people we have lost at Shakaola. Sons, children, mothers, daughters, all the ones. It's not just about you drifting. You are carrying along. The enemy is using you just as a seed to affect other people in the society. Friends, we need to pay the cost of that consciousness so that we don't slumber. May the Lord, let's be standing this morning, this afternoon. May the Lord revive us again. That's our prayer this morning. Lift up those hands as we introspect our lives. We want to ask the Lord to revive us again. The Lord is here to forgive us. The good news about the gospel is that God is always calling us to his side. He will never leave us alone. When we drift away, he brings a message like this one today. Just to wake us up and tell us, no, go back to the cause. Let's lift up our hands and make a prayer before the Lord. Uweponi mwako. 
In his presence, we experience that forgiveness. We experience restoration. In his presence, we get a speed, an acceleration, even to the right direction. I want to, to be there. Napenda kuka hapo bwana. Not go anywhere else, Lord. It's only your presence, Lord. 